Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Little Acts of Kindness. This will be Part 15, Chapter 15, entitled MRI. Shota stood, watching as Shizenji looked over Midoriya, the child who, according to Izachi, used erasure. All right, dearie. Do you think you can try and activate erasure again? She asked him. The boy looked nervous, but nodded. A moment later, green eyes were red, and Izuka's hair shifted, as if there was an invisible breeze. The woman gave a nod and had Midoriya release the quirk. She went to the desk and pulled out a small device. She went towards Midoriya, who shifted away, eyeing the strange device warily. Shuzenji just smiled. This is an ophthalmoscope. It will help me look into your eyes. It will shine a light and I can look through it like a microscope, okay? Midoriya nodded and Shota stood nearby, watching her work silently. Hizashi, on the other hand, was pacing around, worried that something might be wrong. The nurse stood back up. I see. Shota, would you mind if I look into your eyes for a moment? You too, Hizashi. Both of them sat down and she looked into their eyes. She tissed at him after she looked. You used your quirk, didn't you? I warned you that if you used it, you could damage your eyes. You got lucky this time, but it's going to take them longer to heal now. Shota grimaced behind the bandages, but he was relieved that he didn't further injure his eyes. It had been a risk, but one he felt necessary to take. Right, but I did notice that Midori's eyes have that secondary pupil and iris. I will have to do an MRI scan, and depending on the results, we might have to go to an optometrist. Follow me. She started walking off towards a side room. Now, it's not every day I have to make use of the scanner, though I don't know why Nezu insisted on us having it. Frankly, it's surprising just how useful it is. Outside the room, she paused. Make sure you remove all metal before entering the room. They took a couple minutes removing everything metal. The three of them entered the room after her, and showed us all a large MRI device. The MRI room had another door that led off. Shizenji finished the preparations for Midoriya, having him change into a hospital gown. Once he came back in, she directed him to lay down on the table. Midoriya did, and she pushed the table in so the kid was encased. She led Hizashi and him over to the other room, which had a computer with six monitors which were displaying various info. With a few clicks, the scanner started up. It took time for it to scan, about 40 minutes of them just sitting and waiting. After it was complete, the result started to process and Shuzenji had Midoriya exit and come back into the side room with them. A couple minutes passed before the image popped up, though it wasn't anything Shota could understand. Shuzenji pulled up a second brain image, this one a bit different looking than the first. She gave a small hum, eyebrows furrowing. Then she pulled a third brain up, this one he recognized as his own scan that had been done after he was injured, to make sure he didn't sustain any damage to his brain. They stood around, all of them looking at the scans, even though none of them made sense of the scan. I will have to send it to a neurologist to be sure, but take a look at these sections here, she said, pointing at the area of the brain towards the back. This section is the occipital lobe, which is the part of the brain that deals with vision. This image is what it normally looks like. Now, if we look at Shota's here, we can see that his has a small section that is a lighter color. When I first came across it, I thought it was a tumor, but my fellow healer told me that it was actually a key part to Shota's quirk, allowing him to see when his quirk is active. If this was damaged too badly or removed, then while Shota could still use his quirk, he would be unable to see with it active. Now, take a look at Midoriya's scan. They all did, eyes going onto the area she had pointed out, showed us all that small white area. As you can see, Midoriya has a secondary optical gland. What does that mean? That he has erasure and this superpower quirk? Izashi questioned, a doubtful tone coloring his voice. She huffed, shaking her head, as a brief look of annoyance crossed her face. Now, normally I would say that this is something he had all along, but remember that sample you brought this morning? Yeah, Izashi responded, a worried look in his eyes. Right. Well, most of the sample you brought me seems to be vitreous humor mixed with melted sclera, though the diagnosis did discover parts that were made of the retina and iris. Shota frowned. What sample are you talking about? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Well, I did tell you the little listener was hurt all weekend, but when I returned in, I saw he had set his laundry basket out and spotted a pillowcase on top with the strange white stuff. So Midori came out, saw me looking at it, and explained that he had discovered it. Where did you say you found it again, little listener? Uh, around m my eyes, Midoriya answered. Right, so he said he found it around his eyes, and that he didn't know what it was, so I figured we could take a scan of it, in case it had something to do with how ill Midoriya was. Shizenji sighed. Well, it makes my suspicions a lot more likely now. And what were your suspicions? Shota questioned. 
that Midori's eyes completely remade themselves this weekend. Possibly also that secondary optical gland, if his body was in the process of completely remaking parts of his body. It would give him a headache and issues with his eyes. Did you have any issues with your vision this weekend? Midori nodded. Friday, after the medicine kicked in, I couldn't really see straight. Saturday, when I woke up, they felt like they were burning. I tried opening them at that point, and I couldn't see anything. It was all white. My head hurt a lot, so I just curled up on my bed and eventually passed out from the pain. N next time I woke up, it was Sunday, and everything was fine. I could see no headache, but th that weird white stuff. I ate some food and r returned to bed, since I was still exhausted. Next I was woke up, it, it was to Mike Sente, knocking at the door. It seems likely, then, that Midori's eyes remade themselves to be able to use erasure, though I don't know why, but I assume it might have something to do with... Shizenji cut off, shaking her head. Well, I assume it has something to do with this quirk, that it might not be as simple as just superpower like you originally thought, Midoriya. Would like to have a personal friend of mine come over. She has a quirk that can determine what quirks are. I don't know when she'll be able to come over, so keep on the lookout for a text from me, Hizashi. The voice hero nodded. Right. While everything appears to be proper, I would recommend you not use erasure until my friend has arrived to see exactly how your quirk works. Midoriya nodded, agreeing to her terms. Good. Now, Midoriya, if you experience any other odd pain, I want you to call my number, or if you can't have a parent, hold on to my number so they can get a hold of me. I I'll g give a copy to Auntie, the boy whispered, his stuttering getting worse mentioning her. Recovery girl paused, looking at him. Not your mom or dad. Mom is ill, and Dad works overseas t to support us. Shota mentally raised an eyebrow at that, since they knew nothing about Midoriya's dad. The only thing they knew was that Midoriya's uncle worked overseas as well. What is your mom ill with? Recovery Girl asked. Midoriya shrugged. I, I don't know what it is. She's mostly unresponsive, unless asked a question, or, or told to do something on normal days. Recovery Girl nodded. All right, I guess this aunt of yours will do, then. Izashi grimaced at that and showed a pursed his lips behind his bandages. Recovery Girl noticed Izashi's grimace and raised an eyebrow at him. His aunt is Miss Bakugo. We ran into her once when dropping Midoriya off. The healer nodded. All right. Midoriya, I want you to have a text drafted up, so all you have to do is press send. That way, if your pain is deliberating levels, you won't have to type everything up. If you send it by accident, just shoot a second text, saying that is what happened. Midori nodded and took the offered number, putting it into his phone and typing it up. Then he added a message and showed it. Midori here, need help, I'm at. And then he pointed to a GPS button that he could click, and it would attach his location to the text. Looks good, kiddo, Shota stated, nodding his head. Recovery girl bid them farewell, and the group walked out of the nurse's office, into the empty school building, the last student having left about a half an hour ago as it was starting to get late. It was silent as they made their way to the car, and Shota wasn't sure what to think about all the new information. Midori's quirk, what was it? First, the doctor lies and says he has the double pinky toe joint. Second, the quirk doesn't make itself known until the boy was 15, at the day of the entrance exam. So the registry is updated to superpower, as the quirk appears to be a super-strength-type quirk. Now, though, the boy has developed erasure, seemingly out of the blue. So obviously, Midori's original quirk is not just super strength, but possibly a quirk that gave him other people's quirks. Yet, how was Midori's quirk determining what quirks it would copy? As unlike that 1B student, Midori wasn't copying everyone he touched, or he would have discovered it at a young age. And there hasn't been any sort of time limit with that superpower portion of the quirk, which Shota assumed was copied from All Might. The two quirks had always been close, but it was still different than All Might's quirk, as Midori didn't buff up or anything when using it. Perhaps Shota would have to ask All Might more about his quirk, see if it ever displayed those red veins he had seen on Midoriya during the quirk assessment test. Nearing the end of the trip, Midoriya finally spoke up, asking a hesitant, Are you m mad at me that I c copied your quirk? No, I'm not. Why would I be? If you can use erasure, then that means I can teach you how to use it, and you wouldn't have to rely on that other bone-breaking part of your quirk. Besides, if your quirk is some sort of copy quirk, then that will make you a very versatile hero, but you also have to learn about the quirks that you copied. It will be tough to learn how to use quirks as well as the original user, since you wouldn't have had the quirk as long. 
but if you put the effort in, you would become a strong hero who could save a lot of people. I think it's really cool you have a razor. It's like your show's son. I know he always wanted a child to take care of. Shota blushed. Zashi, he snapped out, embarrassed. Glancing out of the corner of his eye showed that Midori was also blushing in embarrassment from being called Shota's son. His husband laughed, pulling into the parking lot, the two getting out of the vehicle and heading up to the apartment. Shota waited for his husband to come back down. The kid did spend a lot of time with them, but that was only because he was injured, plus the kid was shy and had just started to open up to them. He hoped the kid could trust them, but he did notice that Midoriya's stutter was less when it was just the two of them. He glanced out the window, wondering what was taking Izashi so long and paused, seeing that his husband must have gone inside the apartment. A little while later, and he came back out, sighing. What happened? I just had another talk with Mrs. Bakugo. Izashi started as he started the vehicle and drove away. Shota stayed silent, waiting for Izashi to tell him what happened. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 15 of Little Acts of Kindness. Chapter 16 will be up next. Let me know your thoughts and reactions, and as always, thank you so much for listening.